I ain't my name Barbara 100. I just skipped class with the progress report for sure. The progress report. All right, what's going on? It's your girl Lala Shepard. This is a new episode of Skipping Class, and today I got Bravo 100 in a building. How you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. What's good? Hell yeah, man! Thank you for being here. You definitely been tapping in with us for a while, so it's nice to finally meet you in person, man. All right, all right, all right. Yes, sir. All right, all right. Um, my first question is your name meaning Bravo 100. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, 100 is basically like you know just keeping 100. You know, uh, just staying real within yourself. Uh, okay. Just, you know, keeping it authentic, genuine. Uh, Bravo just basically like me giving myself a round of applause. So I just put it together and just put Bravo on her. Tight. I like uh, that. I like yeah. that. Um, So you from Jackson, Mississippi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm originally, yeah, I'm from Jackson, Mississippi. Born and raised, yeah. Okay, so yeah. tell me about Jackson, Mississippi for you. Like, what was your childhood, like your upbringing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, Jackson, Jackson is a, it's a small... So it's a small town, but I mean, the, as far as the upbringing and all that, it's, it's depending on the environment or how you perceive the environment. Uh, I would say, like, uh, like my folks, they had like a a, a pizza spot there. So on Hanging Moss Road, North Jackson, they had a pizza spot there. Yeah. You know, my uh, so uh, and my my family originally, you know, in Jackson, they from they from the uh, area called Cottage Grove. Okay. Uh, area called Cottage Grove. So. I mean, it was straight. I mean, it's a straight upbringing. You know, it, it, it's got its ups and downs, but overall, I feel like you know, the the development development was good in my era. Mm. Now, if you go back to the if you go back to the area now, mm. they shut down all the YMCA's. Mm. So they shut down all the YMCA's in Jackson, but they had two boys and girls club, and then they have uh, a CDC. But I feel like the foundation is broken because of that. So I mean, if you don't have like the youth coming up in that, then the only thing they see is just the streets. Then of course, you know your, your environment gonna be it's gonna be messed up. But you know you got YMCA's on the outside of Jackson, but not in the capital. Ain't that crazy? I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the most bizarre thing. Um, for you, like as a, as a youth, did you did you go to any of the programs? Oh yeah, I went to the North okay. I went to Northside YMCA. So okay. I played baseball there. Dope. Have uh, I played football there? Okay. I did my swimming there. I can tell you're an athlete. Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I did that on fortification, and I did that at the fortification YMCA, and I did that at the Northside YMCA. So got you. It was dope. Got you. Do you know why they took them away? Uh, I said it's funding, but yeah. So if yeah. my my question to you: Do you feel like this all a plot for like you know just for the inner city youth to not self destruction, but just to not have opportunities for them? Or how do you look at that? You know, I don't like to do like the I feel you the self blaming and stuff. I but at you. the same time, I feel like if you're not putting money. You're not putting like I study, so I study a lot, like mm -hmm. and like as far as like with the environments that you grew up in, and I kind of see like, you know, outside environments where the cities are taking care. As far as like the cities are taking care of the environment, mm -hmm. you know, it's cities on the outside of Jackson where all the all the uh, developments and environments are bricked up. Mm. They're all bricked up, but then they also have where they don't even have any apartments within those communities. Mm. And you have to, and they'll, if, if it's rent, it's jacked up like yeah, a of thousand, course. like. For and, sure. Yeah. That's crazy. So I just feel like uh, it's, it's, um, what I, how I want to say this, it's definitely underdeveloping the youth just because if you don't have those development programs, those environment, and no, in in those environments, I and agree. the foundation, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be like a good development just because, yeah, you have your parents, but your right. parents are, can only do so much. For sure. You know what I'm Especially if you're a latchkey kid. If you're a latchkey kid, yep. a lot of people don't know what latchkey kid yeah. is, but a latchkey kid is like if you coming home and your mom leave you a note, or your mom and dad leave you a note and say that, hey, dinner's on the stove, or, you know, get your homework done, and then they'll be home later. Yeah. If you had that right now, then I just feel like you're not going to, like, if you if you don't have the development of programs that help, that assist the parents, mm -hmm. yeah, you got school, but, I mean, school, it is what it is. A teacher, they do what they need to do. Yeah. But you still need those developmental programs because it helps develop a kid and it gives them chances and and develop some better than just you like oh well it's the parents it's the parents uh responsibility I'm like, uh, 
Yeah, I think I think when it comes to that type of stuff, I, I definitely feel like uh, community raises kids. I feel like, you know, parents can only do so much, but, you know, I do feel like it's a village. Um, but, yes, no, I definitely feel like, you know, it's, it's just crazy how certain things are where it's like no opportunities for kids. So, you know, now for you, are you still in Jackson or are you not? Nah, I've been out the city for a minute. Okay. Just cause of, just cause of career purposes. Okay. I've, I've been out the city for a minute, but I come back and forth. So when okay. I when I mention about like the CDC, mm -hmm. like my family, they do the 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 agape things like agape christian fellowship but it's a cdc program okay help development for the for the children dope i always been a person who's trying to reach back mm -hmm. trying to help the city just because of the it's opportunity in mississippi is far far absolutely far, far fetched and it's not just because it's kind of like the bottom i just feel like this is just my take on it this mm -hmm. is my opinion you know a lot of people they might be like oh well we don't know about that but i just feel like if Mississippi had the same opportunities like they had then, as far as music wise, I feel like Mississippi would have been Atlanta. Just because if you look at the stars that were then, you look at Elvis Presley, like Tupelo, Mississippi, you look at B.B. King, he from the country of Mississippi, you look at, uh, you look at uh, Muddy Waters, all those people had to reach out in different cities to go to develop just because of the times. 100%, no, that makes sense. So. I just feel like, and it's still that. So, I, yeah. I mean, if you look at Mississippi, you look at the artists that have that have gone somewhere, or the producers, or some of the musicians that are now. We have, I know, we have a special tie to Cash Money, mm -hmm. just because it's a, a couple of guys that they came out the city and they're tied to Cash Money, which you know that 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 tie to New Orleans is it is what it is. But um, I just feel like, yeah, it's just like you have to reach. I don't want it to be where you have to reach out to another state or mm -hmm. another city to, in order to go big in Mississippi. So my thing is once if I get this opportunity or I keep developing, which I am, and then I pop, which is going to happen. But I just want to get the opportunity where I don't want to just be tied to a major artist mm -hmm. where someone knows me from a major artist. I want to bring the artists that are from my city onto my projects for sure, so they can get that look and that opportunity. So it's a, a lot of talent. I love the artists in the city. I love my city, but yeah, I just been out of my city for like a while just because of career purposes. But okay. yeah, I, lo I love the city, but yeah. I got you. Um, so, okay. So talk about becoming an artist. Was that in 2019 or was you already doing it before? No, nah, I was doing it before. Okay. So <laughs> in 2003, I want to say 2003, 2004, we had, uh, it's, it was a, uh, it was a beat, uh, like a pimp, little flipping oh, David Banner. Of course. Yeah, little flipping David Banner. My cousin, he cut it on, and uh, he cut it on. We had a cassette player mm -hmm. with the uh, had a cassette in the in the radio, and we just rewind it and yeah. put it back and record. We recorded over that. That was the first time I had actually put lyrics down. Got you. I started doing it in 2003, and from then I started to like the music, I love the music, and then I ended up being in a group. Uh, with, with a couple of my guys from school, it was called uh, Camp Ten. Okay. Then with Camp Ten, we did uh, Sip Squad, and then in 2007, I went on a hiatus, and I didn't come back into the scene until 2017. Got you. So okay. I took like a ten year break. I see what you said. Okay. <laughs> I took like a ten year break. Okay. And then I came back like New Year's of 2017, and I just been at it, and I didn't go on to. Uh, into the platforms until 2019. I was just developing That's what it myself, was. Okay. trying to do what I needed to do. But uh, I've always been in the music just because of the church and then for sure. Uh, my um, and just being around my, my family and stuff. So okay, yeah, I always love the music. So outside of your family and church, like who are some other musical influences? Like maybe whether it's you know just big names that we might know or not so big names. Um, I say like the big. Who did I really like? It, well, you asked a couple of folks. Remember, I used to listen to Boosie like hard. Oh, okay. I, Boosie. Or uh, Scout did. I, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was the guy. That was mm -hmm. that guy. Uh, Boosie. Um, I listen. I mean, I grew up on. I mean, I grew up on your guy though. I grew up on no, your guy. Like, All of us did. I grew up on your guy. Um, uh, Player Fly. Oh, of course. I Memphis Legend. Yeah, yeah. I listened to the. Uh, I listened to the Boss Hogs. Okay. Uh, uh, who else? Uh, who else was a big artist I used to listen to? Uh, Reese and Bigelow, they from my city. Got you. Reese and Bigelow, uh, really headbuster, the song headbuster. Okay, hell yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, Reese and Big, uh, 
who else is big influence? Gucci Man, listen to Gucci Man, man. Of course. Uh, and uh, Mobile, shout out to Mobile. That's where my dad and he originally from. Dope. I usually listen to um, um, Mr. Biggs. Okay. And he's from. He's basically from us. So he's from Maysville, but my dad, he's from PA. You Got know, you. Like Pritchard or whatnot. That's where my dad is originally from. So, shout out to PA. Um, and that was that was about pretty much it. But Boost, I used to listen to Boost like nonstop. Though. Respect, man. <laughs> Respect. What you think about just uh, all of Boosie's things? Now I'm not even gonna say antics, but just Boosie goes viral a whole lot right. for different things, mm -hmm. from speaking about his kids, his daughter, just to everything. What's your thoughts on as a fan? You know, just us coming up listening to him and just seeing how just not saying his image is bad or anything, right. but just seeing how things are now. What's your thoughts on that? being a real Boosie fan? I, I think maybe just because he's so so much into the limelight. Mm -hmm. If he wasn't that much into the limelight, it wouldn't be so, you know, it wouldn't be so looked at as in a negative aspect. I agree. I just think that it, it, he may go about it the wrong way sometimes. I think so. But it may be, I mean, it's his, it's just how him. he feels. It's I his agree. personal beliefs. I agree. I just don't think he goes, like, he, means like ill intent when he's talking about his children or right. talking about certain things. It's just sad. I just, just how he, you know, he just approaches things. But, you know, other than that, you know, I think Boos is still a good dude. I, I met him before, but Me it was too. a long time ago. But he was a good dude. But, For sure. Uh, yeah, I, I still, you know, I'm still a Boos here. So no, of course. Me too. Me still. too. It ain't going to change. <laughs> it's just interesting, I think, just how social media is um, in terms of like, we just seeing stuff that I feel like as fans, sometimes I don't be wanting to see because, it just puts like, like, damn, I just want it to be about the music. I don't yep. be wanting to know personal shit sometimes. But, you know, I was just curious to see how you thought. Yep, yep. Um, so now speaking about your sound and style, mm -hmm. um, I would categorize myself like conscious Southern soul music. Yeah. What would you put your sound and style as? Like, what would it's you say? Sound, the same thing, like a Southern, okay. like a, like a, you know, like conscious music. Very I conscious. Just, I just want people just to like to think about it. Uh, I had a project, like one of my favorite projects I had was financial literacy. Yeah. Just because of the financial literacy is more of just, you know, the pillars of finances is just talking about it. And I just feel like our community, we actually need that. You know, I can talk about it, talk about the lavish stuff, talk about that. But I kind of like want to talk about what the everyday essentials of a regular person. 100%. You know, everybody can't, you know, have these big fancy cars, these big houses, right. these clothes or whatnot. It could be motivation for sure. But I just feel like, you know, you need to talk about the everyday essentials of what a person actually needs. Yep. You know, especially when you're talking about like even just the basics of just life insurance. A hundred percent. It's like 56% of Americans. We don't ever have that. Yep. So it's just basic things. So, you know, um, another, another big, I, I, I don't want to leave these two guys out, man. And I've been studying and I've been studying this guy for a while. And he's actually like, I, just, I don't know what happened. I think maybe it was because mm. of his brother. It could have been because of his brother's death. Okay. But I just feel like he just, he's relentless. Don Tripp. Oh, hell Shout yeah. Shout out to Don Tripp. Don I Tripp. mean, he's been going crazy First of for the all, last. If you don't know, this man has dropped a damn near project every month. month. Yep. But like you said, I think, you know, his brother, uh, yeah. rest in peace, I think yeah. fueled a super crazy fire. But salute to my boy DJ Walt Chamberlain because okay. he really, the, I already knew about Don Tripp, but he yeah. was the one that oh, kind of yeah. told me, like, yeah, he he dropping like yeah. this. And when he put this shit on, I'm like, yeah. 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 He's Don spitting Tripp, in yeah. every song. And, he, and it's uh, an all-star. That's what I know him yeah. about. Yeah. Starlito. But, For sure. Uh, good, so, good, good conscious guys. Got like, you. I like that music. Oh, yeah. And, but I, I like that, though. I think, you know, the dope thing about it, I think when um, you think about Southern artists and rap specifically, people think conscious rap or, you know, Southern artists don't have that. But right. they do. It's yeah. so many. You just <laughs> named a few. So I, I think it's important um, to keep mentioning those names. And it's important to do what you do, too, because we need that. Um, and I know your your newest project, The Financial Strands, mm -hmm. um, I, I definitely wanted to ask you just um, – you kind of touched on it why you talk about financial literacy so mm -hmm. much. I think it's dope. But um, what was the, I would say, what's been the best and worst financial advice that you ever received? The best financial, I'll start with the, I'll start with the best. Okay, that's cool. Let's be positive. <laughs> the, <Yeah>. best, <laughs> the best financial uh, advice I ever got was when I taught one day uh, my uncle. I, did, I got to give all the all the praise to him because that's the one who started me mm. on my uh, the financial advice and, and had me investing when I was seventeen. Mm. So 
and he's a he's a big financial professional. They've been doing it like twenty some years. Hell yeah. So the best financial advice was him telling me as far as like saving. I always but I always was big into saving. Even as a kid, I always would put my money up, put it in like under the mattress and you know, and carry around the cash. I never forget fifth grade. I was in fifth grade and I had wallet, but I had a a, a, a pocket full of money in my wallet. Like, you know, my wallet was yeah. filled with money. And I'll never forget when my father came in and he's like, where'd you, you know, he was like, where'd you get all this money from? Like, what are you? And I'm like, sure. this is the money I've just been having over the time, doing coupon, working with you and all that. But he thought I may have just blown it on candy, yeah. blown it on different stuff, but I just keep That's it on tight. my pocket and keep it. Um, but me getting into mutual funds, me getting into mutual funds, mm -hmm. me getting in the, uh, me getting in a term, like, like term life insurance, just having that, you know, you. Having, getting into the will and trust. Yep. Uh, and then having this uh, tax-free retirement, you know, such thing called an IUL. Yep. A lot of people, they don't know about that and what it does. You know, it's, it's a long, going down a long rabbit hole mm -hmm. and uh, and getting into fixed index annuities. Gotcha. Uh, just like, even if you're just a small business owner and you just have, say it's just like, hey, I had this whatever, five ten thousand $10,000 that I'm not doing nothing with and uh -huh. it's just sitting in a savings account. You could put it in there so it can collect that compound 100%. interest. 100%. And it's just like a small, like a small retirement for you that just collects compound interest. That's real. And um, a lot of people, they don't know that this is what the banks use. They use an IUL for our money. Mm -hmm. They'll take our money. So a lot of people don't, when they have the, say like, hey, I want to go make a withdrawal for like ten or 20000 you have to call the banks in advance because of that. I already know. So a lot of people they don't they don't realize they're like, why do I have to call the banks for right. my money? It ain't there. I was like, <laughs> it's because they put all our if it's a thousand members or two thousand members, they have all our money in the IUL taking out that compound interest mm -hmm. and putting it for their bank. But you know, um, the worst of financial advice I say I got was just keeping my money in the bank. I just that's feel like real. just keeping just keeping our money in the bank. I got a, and I got a couple homeboys that's just because they used to the shoebox. They yep. used to putting their money in the dirt. Yep. They used to not, you know, they not knowing brown paper bag. I mean, it is what it is, but <laughs> they not, you know, they just keep their money in the savings account. Or they put put their like, yeah, I just got my money in the savings account, so I can always have access to it. I'm like, no, nah, man, you need to put it in this. You need to put it in that. Mm -hmm. So, you know. It's it, it's been a it's, it's been a up and up on the on the financial side. So no, nah, that's I yep, respect yep, that, yep, man. Yep. More people of our color need to speak about it and make it normal to speak about. Yep. Um. So I respect that. Okay. Okay. Um. Now, in terms of um, you know, your music, you got your own record label, right? Yeah. Okay. So talk okay. about that. Okay. So we are talking about uh, like the label, like a. It is imperative if you have your own label, you have your own business, mm -hmm. to understand the music industry and what it entails. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've, I've sat in a couple of these meetings and with these with these big labels and they do, I, I don't see them as sharks or them trying to mm -hmm. get me. Mm -hmm. If I'm reading the black and white, I bring a lawyer with me, I bring, I'm, I'm reading out the black and white, I may have taken my time where it takes more time to see what it yep. is. But if a label lays out a million dollar contract and they're like, hey, it's $500,000 for your for you, but it's a pot of money, but $200,000 you can take today. The other $300,000, hey, we may end up putting this, using this for other things. Mm. And then that other half a million dollars, they put it in the marketing, advertising and whatnot, and they'll see what the back end holds. Mm -hmm. Um, and you may have to do a certain amount of projects, certain amount of singles, certain things that they require you to do if you're assigned to them. Right. But I don't see it as a bad deal if they've laid out everything in black and white. I've read through everything, taken my time with it, and I just didn't see the numbers. You know, I understand the data and metrics. I understand the analytics of what's going on mm -hmm. inside of the business. So I would say with the label, I understand that it's overhead. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, they, like, you was talking about $100,000. I'm just, this is speaking on a small scale. Yeah. I'm talking about $100,000. I got to take $100,000 for this being an artist. Right. And this is right now. So say you started right now, I took $100,000, and I don't pop. Can you still deal with your everyday bills even if you don't pop? I bet $100,000, can you keep going just because you just breaking 
the threshold. Right. You had never got to where you're going with, or you just say, forget it, and you give up. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people give up because they don't have that financial backing. For sure. But if you have the financial backing, you'll be fine, but you still need to understand how the business works. You have to understand your taxes. Mm-hmm. You got to understand. A lot of people don't understand right. that. A lot of people don't understand, even where I've been dealing with mortgage myself since mm-hmm. I was 21 years old. Mm. But a lot of people don't even know that they can write their rent off mm-hmm. under the business. Mm-hmm. You're using your business, you're using your, your address as a business, you can write your rent off. Mm-hmm. Well, I, they don't understand how that works. They're dealing with 11, 20 S's. They're dealing with certain things. So you have to understand anything you have, you need to understand the business side of your work. You need to understand all of that. It's not right. just about the glitz and glamour and all that stuff. It's about understanding the business side. So uh, when I'm speaking about like the business or whatnot and I'm doing I've been doing my taxes on my business, making sure that everything is in line, right? Right now, hey, flights. Uh, yep. Flights, entertainment, hotels, food, uh, writing off all this stuff. And mm-hmm. then just making sure that my expenses are marked down, everything that I've done, electrical, lawn, landscaping, everything. Writing off all of that. So, I mean, it's, it's it, once you get the hang of it, you're fine. For sure. But once you, if you don't understand it, you just, you know, hey, I'm just spending money. You're not writing off anything because you don't want the government to be involved in your business. Then I feel like you're taking a loss. So. That's real. Yeah. I think, you know, um, as an entrepreneur, you got to wear so many hats, but mm-hmm. it's so important to, like you said, just learning the business in general. You have to, yep. like, you definitely should take the time to do it because if not, the business going to learn you. Yeah. So I, I feel you there. Even if you're speaking on, like, a, you could look at all businesses in a similar way. Mm-hmm. Like, I if agree. you say it as an independent, so if I say I'm an independent, I can just take it, for example, like an independent artist, mm-hmm. an independent trucker. If I'm an independent artist, I'm just if and if I'm dealing with Empire, if I'm dealing with Sony, if I'm dealing with Def Jam, and I want to remain an independent artist, all I'm doing, I'm going under their authority as an independent artist. Still can do that as a distribution deal. Vice is me being an independent truck. I have my own truck, Mm -hmm. independent owner operator, and I'm going to whoever Toyota, and I'm riding under their authority to go deliver loads. So it's the same. All business. It's like hand in hand. It's like one and the same, but you just have to understand it. Just know what you're doing. 100%. Before you do it. You That's know? real. Or why you doing it, you know. That's real. <laughs> now, outside of creating music mm-hmm. and teaching us all about financial literacy, you got <laughs> other endeavors, too. Yeah. So I want you to talk about that. You got a, is it a graphic company, a graphic design company? Yeah, I do. I do like the clothing or whatnot. I just said like okay. my own. I do like my own. Uh, basically, like like stay focused or okay, whatnot. Cool, just cool, like cool, with, cool. with my okay. with my label or whatnot. And then I do like the herb, the herbal, like yes. the tea. Yeah, the tea Sip and the wellness. essence. Yeah, sip of wellness or whatnot. Tight. I do like the tea and stuff like that. Just more about like the health, the health and our you know and our people. You know, we we like the sweets. You know, we like the fried chicken, filet, macaroni and cheese. Fried food. It's good. It's good it's food. Like, yeah. <laughs> it is good but. food, but. You know, this on the back end, right? When you get older, yeah. you get older, you know, the stuff can catch up to you. Yeah. You're not doing it right. You're not balancing out everything. So, but the business is more about like, hey, finding out that 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 wellness and, and finding that balance and just making sure that you're taking care of your, you know, your inner body. A hundred percent. I think, again, that's, that's something else that's important that I think, you know, again, our community needs to normalize speaking about openly. So I respect that, man. Um, so, you know, like with you, your physique, you can tell that you were an athlete and we kind of spoke about some stuff earlier, but like, what's your workout regimen now and how do you balance that with everything that you do? Um, my workout, so I'm more of a, uh, I like the weights. Okay. I I lift weights for a while. I lift the weights all the way from like 14 to... Now I do a little light work, but I was serious in the weights from fourteen to like twenty eight. Got you. I did a lot. I did a lot of that uh, lifting weights, but now for like the last like couple years, I'm b- been big in cardio. Got so I do you. Cardio and calisthenics. Okay. I do the calisthenics a lot, so I do pull ups. You know, like a say I do a pyramid. So I start from ten. I do 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Then mm. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, go all the way back up. So I do like you know like twenty sets. A pull up, so th- just to get yourself right. Uh, dips, mm-hmm. do the same thing with dips 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and then go back up. And then I do uh, four sets of 25 of burpees, like the burpees, <laughs> right? So I'm like, that's yeah, so, I know what you're talking about. So, then, <laughs> so do the burpees, and then I do some planks. 
I do planks, sit there for a minute, you Man, know. Man, planks ain't no joke. <laughs> do some planks. But it's all about, you know, it's just just trying to keep myself up. But a lot, but the physique, yeah, it's about what it's about the lifting and the calisthenics, yeah. but it's really your diet though. I know, and that and that's the hardest thing. It's, it's really like, your diet hey, though. Right, still. Facts. It's really it's Trust really me, I diet. am. Facts. <laughs> now let me ask you, have you ever had any celeb look alike celeb comparisons? Yeah. All right, tell me who. <laughs> Shannon Sharp. Shannon fucking Sharp. <laughs> that is actually hilarious. So okay, let's talk about it. Like Random strangers say it to yeah. you. Do people ever think you actually? Because y'all actually yeah. kind of got the same physique. In California, I thought I was gonna, I thought I was gonna get in a confrontation when I was in California before because it was what was in twenty twenty one. The guy, you know, he had text in his face with not Hispanic cat, and he was just looking like, looking. I'm like, man, what is this dude looking at? I keep looking, keep looking at me. I'm looking at him, but I'm just like, okay, well, let's like, get to it. Yeah, and he was like, hey. I was like, hey, yo, he was like, and then when he did that, I'm like, you knew I'm, not was. Shannon, I'm not Shannon Sharp, man. He was like, oh my God. He was like, I could swore you were Shannon Sharp. He started laughing and everything. I was like, nah, yeah. I'm not Shannon Sharp, man. I had a lot of people say that. Yeah. When I was in Cali oh, California, like back and forth in California, oh yeah. A lot of people, uh, uh. That's funny. I was like, man, I'm Have like, y'all met yet? Nah, I ain't better yet. yet. Nah, nah. Y'all gotta be. <laughs> yeah. I feel like y'all could do some dope ass content. Like, cause it's crazy. Y'all really got the same physique. That nigga built you built. That's that's kind of crazy. I mean, it really is. It's like I was like, yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, I know he from he's from Georgia. Got you. I got some. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got. I mean, I have my family. I have some family like down in uh. Ah, I think it's close. Look, well, it's like a two hours away from here. Mm -hmm. It's like a small town. I had some family, but they were, you know, my uncle's been were back and forth back in the day. I don't gotcha. know what they had going on, but yeah. So <laughs> okay, I got yeah. you. Uh -huh. I had to ask that. Ooh. Now, are you a father? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm I'm you, you got daughters, right? Yeah, I got, I got, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because yeah, I, I seen them uh, in one of your videos. Uh, yeah, so yeah. let me ask you, as a man, how is it raising two young ladies? Oh yeah, yeah. but don't, no, but. Those not my daughters. Oh, in the they're video. not. No, those not. But they were just so the one. So the video I was shooting, it was like right here. Like oh in, shit, okay. It was around here, and it was actually um, people that were passing through. Okay. And they just asked it, and they were like, "Hey, can my daughters? You know, can they be in the video? What? Or not? You know, shout out to them. That's what's uh, up. Okay. And they just said, "Hey, uh, can they be in the video? I was like, sure. "That's too funny." And so I was like, "Okay." I was like, "Sure." And they were like, "All right." And we just put it together. I was like, I just I put them in the video. I was like, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, they were actually down for like a trillion competition. Got you. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> so how is it for you? Do you have daughters? Yeah, I okay, do. So, I do though. Yeah, so yeah. Talk about like raising young ladies though. Like how is this, especially in today's society? Mm. Oh. And do you yeah. let your kids <clears throat> listen to everything and watch everybody? I do not. Okay. I I try to stay. I try to stay uh, on them. I, but. Mm, it is it is tough just because it's a yeah. TikTok. It's but it's a social media. It's a social media society. It like is. It's, I mean, yeah, they go outside and play, but it's far from what it used to be. It's not a sun up to sundown, playing into you know playing at the street light. Come on, Different. you run inside. It's none of that. It may go outside for like an hour or two, and mm -hmm. they ready to come back inside and either play Roblox or. Or play on the iPad, or get on social media, watch people build toys on YouTube. I'm like, you know, <laughs> so it, it it's it's challenging just because of that. Mm -hmm. But they but they're okay. They're not okay. bad. They're no, not respect. Bad. respect. Yeah, they're not bad. I respect that. <laughs> um, okay, so you know our platform is called the Progress Support. We talk about growth, getting better. You are a progressive person. So, what does our keyword progress mean to you? Oh, progression. I just feel if, as long as you're moving in the right direction. So, hey, you're great. You're grading yourself. You're like, hey, be honest with yourself. Doing like, hey, have I? What have I done this year mm. that I didn't do last year? Am I progressing? I told myself that, hey, with this, with progress report, I was yes, like, sir. you know what? I'm gonna go up there. And I'm gonna do. You've the been interview. saying it too. I was, yeah. and I was like, I'm gonna make it happen. I was like, you know what? Just like that. So I just feel like, hey, getting more networking. Uh, uh, progressing, 
making sure that you're your biggest critic because you should be your biggest critic. I agree. And it shouldn't be nobody. It should be your biggest critic. I it's agree. like, nah, that don't sound right. But everybody else will be like, man, that sounds super dope. Nah, it makes so sense. So just moving in the right direction. Making sure that you stay on the incline. You don't have to feel peer pressure and feel like you have to do certain things if you're not ready to do it. Everything takes time. Yeah. A lot of people may have a special connection where it didn't take them a lot of time, but right. if you don't, everything takes time, but you'll get there. Exactly. And it's not like a, as long as you move in the right direction, it's not like a certain time limit on where you're supposed to go as long yep. as you're moving in that direction. I dig that 100%. I think, you know, again, uh, you're a progressive person just for the fact that I love what you speak about, man, and, you know, that you make it cool, and that's what it should be in our community. Make that shit cool to talk about. Normalize talking about finances and shit like that. So what else you got coming up next? Uh, I'm I'm going to release another project I had in uh, it, it, it It's going to come before the year out, so okay. I'm, I'm going to release that. That'll I'm be your 10th. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to keep putting out more content every every so often but i'm trying to you know i'm trying to get in the door trying to close in on something special before before the year out so okay. trying to close in on this on this situation so Good luck. see what's up hell yeah uh, uh, uh. okay well let them know your social media where can they follow you at okay hey all my tags all my handles uh at official bravo 100 you can find me all over the media you can find me on TikTok, facebook ig all that you know what i mean respect man well thank you again for skipping class with us all right, all right. appreciate you the Progress Report.